All right, so here we go. So welcome back. And here, we're going to be talking about significant figures today. And sig figs are pretty important because uh, when you're measuring something, you have to understand what values are significant and what values are not significant. And depending on who measures with what, it makes a difference, okay? Um, when the instrument that you're using is very precise, you could take it out to many sig figs. However, at certain point, there's not going to be enough digits to work with. So, for example, sig figs. A number of significant figures in any given number includes all of the digits that are of definite value, right? Definite value plus, and this is the big one, the first digit to the right with an uncertain value. So, what does that mean? Here's an example. Let's say I am measuring the length of this bar right here. When I'm using this measuring device, it looks like it is definitely more than 25, but less than 26. So this value of 25 is definite value that I know. But this 0.5 there's no real markers between 25 and 26, so I'm going to have to estimate or guesstimate right, what that value may be. That guesstimation is the uncertain value, and it was estimated to be 0.5. That means this 0.5, even though it is an uncertain value that was guesstimated, it is still significant. So when this thing is recorded as 25.5, there are three sig figs in this measurement. Okay, so five is still significant. So here's some rules of significant figures. First rule. Non-zero digits are always significant. Well, what does that mean? Here, I have 32,526. All these numbers are non-zeros. And there are five of those. So, 32,526 has five sig figs. That was easy. 4,235. Again, there are four non-zero digits and they are all significant. So I have four sig figs for this one. Even when you have decimal, anything that is before the decimal and after decimal that are non-zero digits, they are always significant. So here, 3.141593 has seven sig figs. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Okay, now let's talk about second part. All Final zeros after the decimal point are significant. So there's a little bit of asterisk on that, and we're going to have to talk about that. Like, for example, 36.00. These zeros after the decimal place are significant. Therefore, therefore, this has four sig figs. However, however, let's say we have something like this, 0 0.0036. These zeros here are placeholders. So they are not significant. 
okay? This is also not significant. So in this particular case, even though these zeros come after the decimal place, they're not the final zeros, okay? So here I only have two sig figs. Now, if I were to give you another example, 0 0.00003660, again, these zeros are therefore a place values, not particularly significant. However, this final zero after the decimal points, these are significant. So here, these three digits are significant. So we have three sig figs. Okay. So let me see if I could give you an example. What about um, 0 0.00360000? How many significant figures will we have here? Come on, somebody hold the hand up or fingers up. Uh, yeah, five, correct. Nice job, Will. Uh, Catherine, you have a question? No? Do you have no, a question? I just answer it. Oh, sorry. All right. No, okay. All right. You were going to say five, right? Yeah. All right. So that is correct. So five sig figs. So all these are significant. So five sig figs. Good. Now let's take a look at rule number three. Zeros between two other significant digits are always significant. So when we have non-zero digits, and we have some zeros in between those non-zero digits, they will, they will always be significant. So in this particular case, I have two non-zero digits, and there are three zeros between them, so all these digits are significant. So this would also have five sig figs. Here, 5.03040. These zeros are significant because they're between non-zero digits. And this zero is final zero after the decimal, so this is also significant. Therefore, we have six sig figs. Here, however, 0. 0105. This is the only zero that is between the two non zero sig figs, so there are only three sig figs for this value. All right, that was easy. So here, rule number four, we sort of talked about it at, at rule number two. So hopefully this, this will be a moo point. <laughs> I heard someone say moo point instead of moot point. So it's like, what do you mean by moo point? Well, you know, that's what Cal says, moo. So when Cal says moo, this really doesn't matter. So it's moo point. Anyway. If I have zeros used solely for spacing the decimal points are not significant. So in this particular case, these two zeros here are not significant because they're holding for the decimal place. However, this one definitely is significant because it comes after final zero after the decimal. So here I have two sig figs. This one, again, these are for 
just holding a place value so this is only the sig fig here so it's one sig fig for this one what about this one 300 with a dot what would that be I know in chemistry class if you put like a decimal point after a zero that means you should count up to that decimal place right so so most of you will probably say three sig figs yeah three sig figs and that is correct this is three sig figs but I don't like it I don't know it's just kind of weird because what if like this comes at the end of the sentence you know three zero zero dot and then another period you know dot dot <laughs> I don't know it's kind of weird right what about 300 how many sick figs is that what would you say about that Lulu can't hear you we don't know huh can it be three or can it be one what about two we really don't know you know what I mean it's kind of it's whoa she fell off the screen <laughs> did you fall off a chair you all right no, I, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah I freaked you out didn't it like we don't know it's like you know we, it's kind of hard to tell whether this is one sig figs two sig figs or three sig figs because what if I just like you know counted the pages in a book and it came out to be exactly 300 you know and, and I write down 300 then you know of course well you should put decimal point down uh, yeah I guess I could do that right this the number of pages in this book is ex are exactly 300 dot dot weird so in order to avoid confusion because it could be like one two or three sig figs right in order to avoid confusion this can be represented Three different ways if you want to represent this number in one sig fig right so if you want to represent this in one sig fig you should write it in scientific notation like so like that now you know this is definitely one sig fig if you want to represent this in two sig figs right You should write this as 3.0 times 10 to the second. And if you want to write this in three sig figs, now you can say 3.00 times 10 to the second. Now you know exactly how many sig figs are in that value. Is that cool? Is that all right? All right. So now we know why it's important to have scientific notation. Okay. So let's take a look at some rules of arithmetic using sig figs. Okay. So rules for significant figures arithmetic. For multiplying or dividing with significant figures, a solution can never have more significant figures than the least number of sig figs in any component number within the calculation. It's like, oh my God, okay, what does that really mean? It's always nice to have examples, I think. All right? So here, if I say 3.20 times 2. Here, I have three sig figs. Here, I only have one sig fig. Which means, since it can, the answer cannot have more than 
the least number of sig figs, my answer better be in one sig fig. So when I use a calculator to solve this thing out, you know, I'm going to get something like, you know, 6.4, right? But since my answer has to be in one sig fig value, I look at this and the one over. Since this is less than five, I round it down to make it six as my answer. All right. Now for adding and subtracting, okay, for adding and subtracting, a solution may, may, can, never, uh, yeah, right. Let's get rid of that may, sorry. Okay. For addition and subtraction, a solution can never be more precise than the least precise measurement. Now the precision itself means more decimal places. So if you have one value that has only one decimal place, another value has four decimal places, another value has like 18 decimal places, you cannot have answer greater than one decimal place because that's the least precise, all right? So let me give you another example. Let's say I have three numbers to add. For example, 3.2461 plus, let's say, 1.3 plus 4.0136471791126 just to make it interesting, all right? So I have all these three numbers. Now, which one is, which which value has least precision? Well, 1.3. This is only precise up to 10th of a digit. This one is more precise it's got 10,000th. This one, it's like ridiculously precise, right? So our answer should not be greater than the least precise measurement. So our answer should be rounded to the tenth, all right? So when I add all these values up, I get something like, you know, 8 point five five nine seven four one seven nine one one two seven six so since 1.3 has the least precision we have to round our answer to tenth of a place tenth digit so if we were to look at this I better look at the next digit over and that looks like five so I better round my answer up to six, and my answer should be 8.6 as my answer. Is that good with everybody? Yeah? All right. That's easy enough, right? So let's check our understanding and see if you can work out the next four problems. I'll give you about four minutes. Right, and see if you can work it out on your own. And we'll meet back here at twelve fourteen. Right. All right, I hope not too many people had difficulty with this. So let's take a look. Um, 
first one says divide 36.5 by 3.414 seconds. All right. So here, this looks like it has three sig figs, right? And this one looks like it has four sig figs. That means since we're multiplying and dividing, right? We should not have our answer bigger than the least amount of sig figs. So the answer must be or must have only three sig figs, right? All right, so if we were to say 36.5 meters, divide that by 3.414 seconds. And of course, we can use our calculators to work this thing out. And when we do use our calculator, I think we'll get something like 10.69127124 meters per second. But since we should only round it to three sig figs. This is what we have to round it to. But we have to look at this fourth value in order to see if we have to round the last digit or not. And since this is nine, we better round this last digit up one. So we should have our answer to be 10.7 meters per second all right i hope everybody got that yeah all right next here it looks like i have three sig figs right here two sig figs so the answer must have only two sig figs. All right. So if we multiply, right, 3.22 times by 2.1, well, centimeters, centimeters, then we get our answer to be 6.762 centimeters squared. But since we only have to go up to two sig figs, so this is how many sig figs we need. But since we take a look at the third one and say, oh, wait, this is six. It's more than five, so we better round up again. So this should be 6.8 centimeters squared as our answer. All right. Now let's take a look at adding and subtracting. When we're adding, first thing you should do is make sure all the units are legit. They're all same consistent units. All right, so check. And if they are uh, all same units, now we can truly add them. If they're not the same units, we have to convert them into same units or we cannot do the problem. All right, so here, uh, same units are good. So 24.686 meters, right, plus 2.343 meters, plus 3.21 meters, right? When we add them all up, we'll get 30.2 three nine meters looks like the least precise digit is this one right here this looks like the least precise digit that means we should round our answer to 
the hundredth place, right, hundredth place. So if we were to um, round this thing up to hundredth place, we take a look at the thousandth place, and that looks like nine. So our answer should be 30.24 meters as our answer. All right, and last but not least, here we have 15.3 meters minus 8.75 meters minus 0 0.0023 meters. It looks like this is the least precise digit, right? So 15.3 meters minus 8.75 meters minus 0 0.0023 meters. So looks like this is the least precise. So we have to round it to tenth of a place. So if you work this thing out, you get 6.5477 meters. And since you look at, you have to round it to the tenth, you look at the hundredth, right? If you look at the hundredth right here, and that looks like less than five because it's four. So our answer should be 6.5 meters as our answer all right all right i always like to use this example um like some people get confused like oh, you know it's, i thought it was a, like you know least sick fig or lowest sick fig. no so here let's say we have like 1.2 right plus like 20 Two point zero 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 one. Right. When you add this up, you're going to get twenty three point two zero 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 one. This is very insignificant, right? So you really should just round it to. 23.2 and booyah that's what we have all right all right so i'm gonna actually uh, assign homework i know because we have to really plow through this boring chapter so please do right homework page one the whole thing okay um uh, where is that? Well, that homework is actually located at Schoology. If you take a look at here, uh, if you look at the current unit and you look at chapter one honors, if you take a look at the homework right here, um, this is chapter one right here, PDF. That's what you have to do. Listen, don't try to print from here directly because your computer gets hung, hung up because of, uh, I guess, permission, you know, requirements. So your, your computer, your printer gets all hung up. So best thing to do is download it to your computer first. My mouse is frozen, sorry. Download it to the computer first. And then after you download it to your computer first, then print it from your computer to your printer, all right? Now, the first page of this, matter of fact, there are only two pages for this whole thing. So if you take a look at it, it's really easy, okay? It's very, very easy. Only thing that I, I have little, uh, uh, you know, I guess, concern will be, I guess, uh, number four and five. They are the prefixes 
you, I think you should already know how to do prefixes. So you could print that the metric prefix page out and utilize that to see if you can use that to uh, as an exercise for four and five. All right. So I'm not going to hold you completely responsible for four and five, but you, sh you should be able to do it. Also, uh, six and seven, it's really not that hard. So try it. Okay. Try that. All right. So that's where we're at. Any questions? Yeah, easy, easy stuff. All right. Let me see if I can close this thing out. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing before I go from here, before I close this thing out completely. Oh, my mouse is frozen. Uh, this sucks. Hello? Maybe I need a new battery. I just changed this battery. If you go into um, chapter notes, right? You see the lecture videos? Um, I posted a video of the lectures on Schoology. So if you ever, you know, need to go back and listen to some part of the lecture again, feel free to do so. I won't charge it. Okay. All right. It's free. It's free. It's on YouTube. So, all right. I'm, I'm working towards that, that gold button, you know, that gold million play button. So far, I got 12. So, you know. We got a long way to go, but we'll see. All right. So, all right. So much for that. So here we go. Moving right along. Okay. Moving right along. Sometimes when you're writing all these big numbers or sometimes small numbers, it's real pain in the butt to write it all out. So best way to do that is to write it in scientific notations using exponents. All right, so we all know how to do this. So here we go. Um, a numerical part of the measurement is expressed as a number between one and ten. Um, when they say between, I guess you have to include the one as well. So it's really more for zero between zero and ten, right? So that is the that is the pretty much the standard, but that doesn't mean you can't write it with like a decimal like this, right? Like it, it doesn't mean, you know, you could write it like that. You could write it like that if you want to. So this is actually like, you know, anywhere from 0 to 10 that you could do that. But the standard is to have the actual number in front, right? Like, like that, you know? So I don't know why I wrote that. Anyway, um, here... The number here times 10 to the exponent right here, all right? This exponent right here is how many, you know, decimal places you're making that out to. So notation sometimes 10 to the, right? This, this 10 to the is replaced by E on your calculator. So if, you use, if you're using a you know, Texas instrument, Right? If you take a look at, like for example, like 3 times 10 to the 4th, right? then you can use 3, and then instead of saying, like, well, let's do that, 3 times 10 to the 4th, right? you could do it this way, but be careful. Sometimes when you multiply or divide, it divides the actual uh, exponent instead. So if you wanted to do the operation, make sure you press this way button to get out of that, right? So when you do that, you get 30,000. Another way of putting this in your calculator will be 3. And then, see this second button right here? Press that, and you'll get an arrow, right? And then you press this EE button, which is, I think, is a comma, right? But I used it so much, the comma is gone. Look at that. It's just gone. Right? So that, and then four. Boom. That is exactly the same as that up there. So when you hit enter, look at that. So 
See if you can use this EE button rather than times 10 to the exponent because this is fine, but sometimes when you do a lot of calculations, it's a real pain in the butt, okay? Now, if you're going to go really small, for example, like 3 times 10 to the negative fourth, right? One thing that you have to understand is this negative is not a subtraction operation. It is actually a negative. Therefore, you should use 3, right? Again, EE button, right? Right here. And then use this negative sign right here instead of the minus operation sign. So this, right? We'll get that little negative thing going. And then 4, and then, ah, you get the same one. <laughs> well, you know, you know, if you could bring it out to the decimal place, it will work out to be that. All right? And again, same thing, if you want to use it as uh, the other way, times 10 to the negative, negative, oops, 4, 4, right? Then, then you get the exact same value again, all right? So make sure you know how to use your calculator properly. All right, so let's express 450,000 in exponential notation. And I'll make it one step further in three sig figs. In three sig figs. So if I want to represent that, three sig figs, what would it look like in scientific notation? Well, since I want three sig figs, I should use these first three digits right here. So 4.50 times 10 to the, like one, two, three, four, five, so notice it's a big number, so you're going to have a positive exponent. Boom. Right? That would be 450,000 in three sig figs in scientific notation. Right? So this is same as 450,000. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Right? Here... I have zero point zero 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 nine one one. Now imagine doing like a calculation with that value, like you know, with eighteen steps. Uh, yeah, sick, right? You may forget a zero here and there once in a while. So it's probably a good idea to like shrink this down into something more manageable, right? So if I want to replace all this mess with a scientific notation, this big giant long thing just becomes 9.11 times 10 to the... Now, first of all, is it a positive exponent or a negative exponent? Well, negative, correct, negative. So negative, and look at this, like si uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 31. Negative 31 kilograms. Well, so anybody know what the significance of that is? 9.11 times 10 to the negative 30 first kilograms? Nobody? That is the that is a mass of one electron. Yeah, that's a mass of one electron. It's very, very, very not so massive. Alrighty. Little rave review here. How many significant figure 
So do we, uh, do we have for this value 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th? Come on, somebody hold the fingers up. How many sig figs? There you go, Will. Three is correct. Right? Three sig figs. And if you were to really write this thing out, you're going to get like 0 0.000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 0.000000667 is what you should have, right? So it's kind of ridiculous to write this out all the time. All right, next, let's express 3.1 in two sig figs. No, I'm sorry. 301 into two sig figs. I got that. Good? Everybody okay with that? All right. All righty. Then, um, if I can actually ask you to uh, take a look at the next page. Let's see if we can uh, check the understanding of um, how much we got out of this. And I'll give you, I'll give you four minutes. I mean, it's really not that hard, but still, I'll give you four minutes. Let's see if you can find the answers to the next page, and I'll stop the recording now. All right, let's 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 take a look at these problems. Hopefully nobody had any problem with these problems. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, add and subtract uh, some of these uh, exponents. All right. Um, if you were to look at this, um, first thing is you need to take a look at the units and make sure the units are the same values or, or same units, I should say. Okay. If they're not, you have to convert them into a consistent units and then uh, add them up or subtract. So for this one, this looks like a 4 million, right? 4 million. And the precision of this value goes to 100 thousandth. Okay. And the other is 300 thousand. And that looks like the precision is going to be at 10,000th, right? I don't know if you can see the color difference. One's a purple and one's a electric neon pink, all right? So, as you can see, the least precise is at, oops, at 100,000th place is the least precise. Therefore, when I add these up, I should round my answer to the least precise digit, which is at hundred thousandth place, right? So my answer should be that, all right? Similarly, if I were to take a look at this, Right. This here looks like 
is my last digit here and this here looks like my last digit here and if I were to write these out in a decimal form this looks like that and this one is that so it looks like this is the least precise digit okay so when I subtract the two you should get that as your answer. Okay. I mean, you can use your calculators. You don't have to like write all this thing out. Just to make sure you know where to round it to. Again, uh, this is the only chapter where I'm going to test you on sig figs. You know, once. We are finished with this chapter and testing with the sig figs. I am not going to worry about you working with sig figs and all your calculations, which is a little pain in the butt anyway, right? Just get your answer, you know, and then round it to like the two decimal places, and I'll be happy as a clam with a pearl, okay? Now, somebody has to say, Mr. Kim, duh, clams don't have pearls, only oysters do. Right? And I'm supposed to say, well, duh, if I'm a clam and I'm not supposed to have a pearl, and if I have, if I have a pearl, wouldn't you be psyched too? Huh? 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 Well, anyway, it didn't work out that well today, did it? Anyway, I'll be happy as a clam with a pearl. All right? All right, let's take a look at the next one. So here we go. Let's multiply by adding exponents. Yeah, you could do that. Right? I mean, if you want to, you can just do that thing and say, oh, since we're multiplying, we should be rounding our answers to two sig figs because this has two sig figs, this has two sig figs, so two sig figs, right? Should be our answer. So if we multiply this, we're going to get like 6.0 times 10 to the, when I add these up, I get ninth meters squared but if you don't believe me on that you could actually use your calculator right and and see if you can use it correctly by saying okay here we go All right three e e right six times two e e to the third and then booyah and look at that Look at that, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, right, right. I have, I have a fake British accent because some days I feel like Harry Potter, you know, right. So, so this is correct and it is in two sig figs, so it looks pretty good, right. Looks like we're in good shape. Next. 2.0, right, 2.0. Now, now check this out. I'm going to purposely make a mistake just to show you why I don't like to use this form. Ready? 2.0 times 10 to the negative fifth times 4.0, right, times 10 to the ninth did you see what I did yeah watch this crazy answer yeah what the beep right because I used you know all this thing and, and notice that the times should be down here but like I multiplied all these out and like became a huge neg like you know negative power so if you're dividing two by a infinite amount of power at the bottom, you're going to get a zero out of this, John, right? So, so here, 
this is how this is why I want to avoid that by doing 2.0 EE, right? Uh, negative fifth, right? Times 4.0 EE ninth, and notice we're gonna get 800,000 instead, instead of a zero. All right. So here we get 8.0 times 10 to the fourth meters square. Right. So next, when we divide, we subtract exponents. But when you're subtracting the negative, you actually are adding the you know, positive too. So in this case, we're going to get 4 times 10 to the eighth. What should the unit be? Oh, come now. Will? Huh? Kilograms. Hmm. Hmm. Catherine, what would you say? Yeah, they cancel out. Absolutely. Look at this. Kilograms cancel out, and you should have nothing. It's actually a pure number. Pure number. And, and voila, right? Using that, right, using that idea, we're going to jump into radians. All right, we'll talk about that. All righty. Very good, very good. All right. Let's do some trig review. All right. Um, in ancient times, especially the Greeks, uh, they were more of a geometry people rather than algebra people. And, and they, they actually were so fanatical about geometry, they actually worshipped geometric shapes. Um, Pythagoras actually thought the most sacred geometry or geometric shape was dodecahedron. And if you knew the secret of dodecahedron, you knew the secret to the universe. And they were like so uh, um, secretive about it, thinking if commoners knew about the secrets of dodecahedron, oh, it would ruin the civilization. So they, they kept it a secret, you know? And, and they worshipped it. Well, I don't know. But it's cool shape, though, right? It is a pretty cool shape. So... What they discover, or, or the Pythagoras discovered was, right? If I give you a piece of stick and a rope, or maybe a string, and ask you to draw a circle, how would you draw it? Most likely, you would probably tie the string to the stick, stick that stick in, to the ground, and then open up the string to a certain radius and then trace it around the whole thing and you'll get yourself a nice circle, right? And then if you want to make a bigger circle, you just, you know, unravel the string a little bit more and then trace it around as well. Well, if you get that piece of string and trace around the whole circle circumference and then open it up, and you divide that by the length of the radius that made that circle. No matter how big or small the size of that circle is, they always got this crazy ratio, a pure number, because circumference is measured in, let's say, meters, and radius is also measured in meters. So the Units cancel out, just like, you know, Catherine said about kilograms being canceled out. So you should have no units at all. Well, that ratio came out to be always like close to 6.283, blah, blah, blah. And they realized that magical number. They said, you know what? We'll call this tau. It's like, whoa. 
cool, Tao. Oh, hell, Tao, right? And of course, they broke that Tao up into a smaller fragments of 2 pi. Now, 2 pi should not have any units at all, right? Because it's meters over meters or feet over feet. But they decide to give a fictitious unit called radians. So whenever you see radians, that really has no units at all. But it is a special ratio of circumference divided by radius. But what if we don't have a complete circle all the time? Well, that part of the circumference, that part of the circumference is called arc length. Okay? So arc length is part of a circumference. Okay, part of a circumference. And the dimension is measure of length. And length has unit of, let's say, meters. And radius is distance from the center of the circle to the circumference. Okay? And that's also is a dimension of length. And it's also measured in, let's say, meters. In one complete circle, okay, so in, I'm going to write that up here, in one complete circle, Okay, there are two pi radians, right? Okay, which is about, you know, 6.283, blah, 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 blah. And the ratio of the arc length divided by radius, okay, is defined as theta. Okay? This theta is arc length, which is length, right? Which is basically meters and Radius is also length, so S over R, the units should cancel out to nothing. The theta should have no units at all, but they decide to give this fictitious unit called radians. So whenever you see radians, it means it is a special ratio of arc length divided by radius. So sometimes radians will appear out of nowhere, and sometimes radians will just go poof, disappear, because it really is nothing. All right. In half a circle, there are pi radians, and in complete circle, there are two pi radians. They decide to break up the complete circle into 360 equal parts, and equal one of those equal parts is known as degree. They also decide to cut up each degree into 60 equal distance parts, and they call that minutes. And each minute can be 
cut up into 60 seconds as well. So they could actually get that precise in a circle. So pi radians over 800 deg uh, 180 degrees is actually 1, not 1 degree. It's just a factor of 1. All right? So whenever you're working with this formula, right, theta is equal to arc length divided by r, your theta must be in radiant mode. All right, and of course, you know, Pythagoras also developed his own theorem called Pythagorean theorem, right? And that is in a right triangle, the sum of the side squared, right, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, okay? So if you were to uh, think about how he explained that was, but this only happens in a right triangle, by the way. It has to be in a, only in a right triangle, okay? So if you have a right triangle, and let's say you measure this thing, and let's say this is like, I don't know, 3.6, so I'll make it 3.6 here. Let's say I have, oops, whoa, 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 wow, this looks really weird, this looks 3.7, 3.7, anyway, uh, if you were to actually uh, have side of a right triangle where this is like four units, and this is three units, so if I were to break this up into, you know, four units long, and if I were to uh, divide this thing up and to put, like, tiles that are four tiles this way and four tiles this way, of course, this is really not that accurate, but I'm just trying to give you a visualization here, and if I were to use on this side, which is three units long, right? So here, let me see if I can measure that out. Maybe, maybe 2.4. So I can use 2.4 here. Or 2.4 here. And then, if I were to do this, This is pretty much the representation of Pythagorean theorem. If I add up all the tiles here, I get 16 tiles. If I add up all the tiles here, I get 9. So 3 squared plus 4 squared, I should get 25. Well, guess what? This right here... If I were to do this, should come out to exactly 25 so here If I were to follow this same thing we did, and look at that. So, magic of geometry, this is how Pythagorean theorem is explained using...
geometry. So look, this is actually 25 tiles. Now this only, of course, works with a right triangle, and there's plenty of Pythagorean triples that you should be familiar with, okay? So this is actually five. All right, so I, I'm sure you're already familiar with that, so I'm not gonna go even deeper into that. Also, if you were to look at your uh, calculator, you know these buttons we have here, the sin button, you know, if you wanna call sin, sin, and the cause button, and tan button, if you wanna get a tan, you know, I don't know if the tanning salon's open anymore. But anyway, if you keep pressing this, you may get a tan, who knows. Um, you need to be very familiar with this trick functions, okay? So here, when you go into um, mode, in your calculus class and math class, most likely you will be using the radiant mode, all right? In physics, we're going to be more concentrating on the degree mode. So make sure you know how to flip back and forth from the radiant mode to degree mode, depending on which class you're in, okay? All right. So here, sine of an angle so if we have a theta right here, okay, so let's say I have uh, here is the theta. The side opposite of theta is called the opposite. The side that is adjacent, which is right next to it, is called adjacent. And this is called the hypotenuse, okay? Similarly, if I were to have same triangle, but let's say the angle's up here now. This is the opposite, this is the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is easy because it's the longest side of the right triangle, right? So if you wanna use sine of theta, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan theta, opposite over adjacent. So we all pretty much know the Native American, right? In, uh, chief name, Sokotoa, right? right? Did you know that he had a twin brother named Sersertix? No, right? I mean, Will, did you ever hear, hear Sir Sir Tix? No. You know why? Because he didn't make it into the Math Hall of Fame. Because sine is not always, right, y over r. It's not. Because in this case, it would be x over r. You know what I mean? But Sokotoa did make it into the Math Hall of Fame. So it's not always true. All right, so make sure you know Sokotoa, not Sersertix. Cool? All right. So, um, wait. What time is this period over, man? Are we in good shape so far? All right. So let's see if you guys can do uh, next page. See if you can do the next page and see if you can test our understanding. All right. I'll give you uh, five minutes. <laughs> 